NIL has been the landscape of college basketball in the last few years. Um, how has it affected your program and how do you think it needs tweaking if needed be? Um, well, I think it's affected every program in the country one way or another. Um, it's had little effect on us compared to um, some other programs that, that, that you've read about. Um, and it's going to continue to have an effect. Um, the, the NIL part has an effect in who you get and who you keep. And the portal has an effect on who you keep and who you get. So at, one of those things would be an issue, but both of them combined is, is, is quite a challenge for everybody. Um, and um, unless they fix it, it's going to be undoable. And you'll see more and more coaches every week, you know, stepping away from it because it can't be done. The way it is right now, it can't be done. Gina, how do you reflect on what this year is going to be for Paige? And the, she's always been in the spotlight. But this season in particular, what do you think it's going to be like for her knowing that even more people now are going to be watching because they know she's going to be in WNBA soon enough and they're looking forward to it? Yeah, there has been a lot of... Um, a lot of attention on Paige since um, since high school, actually, since before she even got to UConn. But uh, she tries her best to not let it um, be as much of a uh, a burden as it can be. Um, her her willingness to accept that responsibility and what she has to do for our team. Um, those two things I think are going to help her. She's more concerned about what she has to do for our team and how she can help our team reach our goals. Um, I'm sure there'll be periods, there'll be times during the season when it becomes overwhelming, either in a positive sense because she's doing so great or in a negative sense because she's struggling. She's going to get both at some point. But she's you know, pretty good at managing that. Uh, but we're, we're, we're going to ask a lot of her, contrary to what maybe is out there with our team. I've said this to our people back home. We, she's playing with a lot of really, really young players, and so that's going to be a real challenge for coaching staff and for her. Um, and because we're playing with a lot of young players, she wants to be on the court all the time, and I know I can't afford to have her on the court all the time. Um, but I know she's deserving of it. Um, but I certainly don't don't think that um, you know we should be adding to the you know it's all page all the time all over the country, which is want to happen with today's culture. How much do you think the players benefit from having her and the fact she takes on a lot herself seems to be so team for a reason? <clears throat> yeah, the players benefit uh, by having uh, by having a safety net. Um, you know, yesterday we were we, we were playing and we we had the scrimmage a little bit among ourselves and we went about five or six minutes and each bucket that we got, Paige didn't get any of them. And it was a great sign because they always look to her and they need to stop looking to her as often as they do. And l yesterday was a really good example of that. But when it comes right down to it, that's who they're going to look at and that's who's going to have to carry them. Um, and there's no getting away from that. Would you compare the dynamic of last year's team to this year's team? Um, we haven't, you know, obviously hard replacing Nika and Aaliyah is difficult, you know, they're two, uh, you know, two pieces of our, uh, you know, Final Four team that can't be replaced. So the dynamic changes just by losing the two of them. Um, our, our incoming freshmen are going to be really, really good. Um, maybe not as good as Aaliyah and Paige were in, in April, you know, but they're going to be really good. So it's going to take a little bit of time, but we're going to be a different team out on the floor simply because we have different pieces to work with. Um, so I'm hoping that we start to find our identity, you know, sometime in November.
end of November. Coach, you added, speaking of freshmen, you added the top freshman and Mason High School Player of the Year in Sarah Strong. Mm -hmm. What's up to you so far about her on and off the court? Uh, Sarah off the court is uh, very, um, very introverted, very shy, very uh, studious. You know, she wants to know, she wants to be sure. She's uh, very cautious, and she started out in September, uh, early October, being the same on the court. And the last two weeks, there's been a more Sarah the Sarah basketball player that got her all those awards and I, I can honestly say that uh, uh, she's probably uh, as impressive as any freshman that we've had uh, in a long long time with all the things that she's capable of doing on the court um, so I'm excited because every day she does something I haven't seen before uh, fr from her. Um, I'm anxious. Uh, I'm anxious every day to go to practice to see, you know, what's the next step that she can take. Little baby step, but the next step. You wanted her to define her role for you this season. Is she starting to do that for you in practice? Oh, yeah. Yeah. She's found... She's found her role already. Her role is uh, every time she gets the ball, try to make a, make a play. And very rarely do you do you have freshmen come in where you're asking them to do that. So we need a big rebound. And I expect her to get it when she's on the court. You know, we need a we need a pass to a shooter. I expect her to make it. You know, um, we need a defensive play. I expect her to make it. We need a big three right now. I expect her to get it. So that's a lot to put on a freshman, but that's what we do with Paige. So it doesn't matter. We've been down that road before, and you wouldn't ask anybody to do those things if they couldn't do it. Do you know, when you went to go see her play, did you sense that, that she had that kind of thing? Um, you know, and, and, and being completely transparent, when Jamel went to this, like, back gym where nobody was. There was only one person watching her play. I think it was Nikisha Sales, who may have been watching somebody else. I don't know, but Sarah was playing, and Jamel came back and said, I saw this ninth grade kid. It's going to be really, really good. Just something. You know, she just saw something. So I went down there right away, you know, and we watched, and all you saw was this young kid who had a knack for doing the things that people have to learn to do. And she already had them. You know, the way she saw the floor, you know, how she finished around the basket, her just non-rushed, casual kind of approach to the game where all the great players have the ability to slow the game down somewhat. Um, and each year, it, yeah, it, it, it became... For me, after her sophomore year, during her junior year, it became if we get if we get if we get Sarah to come into our program, we will significantly change the the trajectory of our program. Yeah, but coach, with, with Paige Becker is playing in her final season, what, what can players like what can the players that haven't seen Paige Becker's play college level basketball in UConn um, expect this season as she has her farewell tour? Anybody that's watched her play will know that, you know, when Paige was a freshman, there was nobody better in the country than Paige. Obviously, she got every National Player of the Year award. And then she kind of disappeared from the spotlight um, because of some injuries. But if you look at our Final Four team last year and how we got there and uh, that we were two points away from playing in the National Championship game, if you know, that was a testament to just how, you know, how much that kid can do for a program, a team, and how far she can take you. Obviously not by herself, but, you know, putting a player like like Paige on your team automatically makes you a national championship contender. And, and so that's the, you know, whatever people want to see, you know, they're going to see. You know, that's the way the world is today. If they want to see, hey, she's the best guard ever to play basketball, that's what they're going to think because she's going to show you that.
if they want to see, hey, she's overhyped, they're going to see that too. So it is what it is, you know. She's going to play great, and she's going to have her unbelievable moments, and she's going to have some down moments. Um, but I think Paige is, uh, Paige is somebody that everybody's going to want to watch. Unfortunately, I wish she was, you know, playing with a much older group. I wish she was playing with a, with a more experienced group. Oh, I thought you raised your hand. Yeah. Oh, I was, yeah, I was pointing over there. Gina, when, when you say that someone you thought could change the trajectory of the program, yeah. I mean, the program that's been in the final four for the 17, 18 years, yeah. that's, not, you, you don't, that's not something I imagine you've said. Before. Yeah, you know, when, when you say that, you, you, it's not like we've been losing all the time and now this is going to change. <laughs> I don't mean that kind of trajectory. I mean that... You're, you know, for the last couple of years, you've been, for whatever reason, you're this far away. So a player like that can help you close that gap. But what I really mean is that's a four-year being able to close the gap. That's not like a one and done, close the gap this year and then leave. Like it would be, let's say, if this was men's basketball. So this is an opportunity to close that gap for four years in a row. And keep it closed. So, because otherwise, you know, you see programs around the country now, even if they do get to the highest level, it's it's hard to stay there on a regular basis. And she's one that can provide you surrounding with other people. She's one that can keep you there. Gino, really, Hold on a second. Go ahead. Gino, just related to that, you talked about you wish Paige were surrounded by older players, yeah. but... The numbers have been a thing where you've had, because of the injuries, you've had to ask right. more of people to do, you know, than you necessarily expected to in October. Do you feel like in a numbers game, this is a team that allows you to throw more potential solutions and different problems over the course of the year? Yeah. As we grow and get better during the course of the year, you know, uh, uh, right now uh, we don't have everybody back from, everybody's in a different stage of, uh, coming back and so you know we don't have AZ full time yet we've got her quite a bit of time at practice but not full time uh, we don't have Caroline back uh, Aubrey's not back so we're Yana Patterson is on hold so we've got some pieces that are still on their way back but what we do have every day of practice is we probably have nine players who can all contribute when they step on the floor. And it's just a matter of now finding the pieces. Here's the problem. The problem, we have nine players that all can contribute. The big, the big thing is they contribute really good when they're on the floor with Paige. So we got to find a way to be really good when she's not on the floor. And I think that's where, you know, maybe Caitlin can help and KK, you know, and, and it's really important that we get AZ back because if we could get in a situation that whenever Paige is not on the floor, AZ can take on that, you know, because mm -hmm. when Paige wasn't around, AZ was unbelievably dominant, so she got hurt. Then Paige has been dominant without AZ. I, I want to see if they can do that together, which I think they will, but then it's a, a comfort level that we can remove one and not, whereas last year we had to play Paige almost 40 minutes every night. And I don't know that you can sustain that, but we won't have to do that this year. I hope. Yeah. If we do, we've got some issues. Yeah, Coach, um, obviously this year UConn got selected to be in the Women's Championship Classic at the Barclays Center. I mean, yeah. when you found that out, that announcement, like, what are your overall thoughts and how will everything you just say describe the game <clears> like that this season? And anytime we get a chance to play in an event, you know, where there's a lot of other good teams, and especially an event here in, in New Jersey. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's things that we've done uh, for the last 30 years where um, we feel like we can elevate the game. We can bring even more attention to the game than has already been there. Uh, there are three other really, really good teams in, 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 the, you know, in the event. So I'm expecting, uh, you know, the, the environment at the at Barclays, you know, during the WNBA Finals, um, was incredible. So I, I know that.
the building has the potential to be, you know, that uh, that kind of spectacle. So I'm looking forward to it. Did you get any added sense of urgency since it is Pages last year? To I mean, you're going to keep bringing in better play, good players, but so any added sense of urgency? Um. Yeah, probably. Uh, certainly on her part, I think she feels it. I think she. Uh, she's at practice she's doing she's doing some things in practice that uh that haven't happened much in the last four years that she's been there three that she's black that she's played uh she's not she's not passing up any opportunity to take advantage of uh what's happening on the floor that benefits her and us whereas in the past she might defer to you or to you and just let it go. And I don't see that happening uh, either on the defensive end, on the offensive end. She's just taking on this. Um, I don't want to leave any stone unturned, right? So I think the urgency is more on her part. Uh, I don't want to add to that, you know. But uh, I, I'm thinking that as the, as the weeks go on, the younger players are going to get caught up in that urgency. And that's either going to scare them, I don't want to screw this up, or it's going to elevate them. And if she's, you know, like we've been down this scenario before when we had D, right? We had a lot of really good players graduate. D came back, two freshmen in the starting lineup, two other guys that had never started before, and she's out there with them. And, and there's some there's some growing pains. And But, the again, I go back to the confidence that you have from knowing you have somebody like her on the floor, um, that's ultimately that's what's going to get us, you know, get us to the next spot. What would it mean? What would it mean for Paige Beckers to have a national championship in her career? Say that again. Caitlin, you mentioned Caitlin Ken earlier before. What does she bring to the table that you felt like you guys really needed, and how have you liked her so far? Um, I've loved her being here uh, because she's. She's an unbelievable competitor. You know, she's a really tough physically. She's tough mentally. Um, she, she has an aggressive mentality. She's used to winning. Um, she, her, she's in that transition period right now from, I said this earlier, am I a rookie or am I a veteran? I'm sure if she was still at Princeton, she would feel like an assistant coach. But all of a sudden, stepping into a new team, it, it's taken her a little bit, and then obviously having Paige. So she's more open now than she has been, and uh, you can see the difference in our team. How do you feel like uh, Alex Turner like her? Um, well, I think what Carla did was um, more than anything teach her how to be coached because she doesn't mind being coached and she looks you right in the eye when you talk to her she acknowledges everything um, there's never there's never any excuse for anything that happens she takes full responsibility um, every, every drill everything she does is game pace so uh, she paid attention, and Carla did a fantastic job with her. Um, I, I'm, sure, I'm sure there are things that I've said and practiced that may be new to her that Carla didn't say. I'll find out what they are soon, but... So far, she's still coming to practice every day. Coach, you, you, uh, you mentioned NIL absolutely needed to fix. Do you have any suggestions? <laughs> How to fix it? Yeah. Uh, the NIL part? Um, well, or, or the, or the portal. well the, you know, the NIL part, I think, is, uh, I think it's a test. It, it's a test for whether people are full of shit or whether they're serious. All right, so it's a test for 
do we keep the charade of student athlete and amateurism or do we call it what it is you know semi-professional pay for play sports so either keep the charade of student athlete which you know teams wouldn't be going 3,000 miles to play conference games if it had anything to do with student athlete welfare that's number one so we obviously threw that in the garbage can so let's just call it what it is we're going to pay these guys to play basketball or play play football or pay them to play you know any sport at a university and then let's be, make it a business and figure out how do we manage this business other sports have done it pro sports they've done it they sign kids to contracts and you're bound to your contract and let's honor the terms of the contract let's do it we already got kids holding out Right? You already got guys playing and going, I ain't playing anymore until I get more money. So we've become professional sports. Let's say it and let's act it. Right? And let's stop the charade. The portal. How about we teach kids how to make a commitment and stick to it? All right, I get it. You want to leave. Fine. Leave. No penalties. How many times do you get a chance to leave? No penalties. Coach can leave anytime he wants. I can. I have a buyout. That's a great idea. Let's sign kids to a contract and let's put a buyout in. Let's make it a business because that's exactly what it is. That would fix it. And let's have a salary cap, which I think this is this 20 percent, you know, whatever it is. I think that's what it is. Right. So they're getting close, but they got to start calling it what it really is and not be ashamed of it. Right? The kids aren't ashamed of it. Hey, you student athlete, you an amateur? Yeah, I am. But you get paid a lot of money. I know. Let's not talk about that, but I, I like it. How's KK doing? KK? Yeah. Uh, KK's KK. She's always been that way, and she'll always be that way. And uh, so whenever you see her, uh, you know the beauty that we have now? Kids can't fake injuries. So when a kid goes down, you know, and whether it's they got, you know, like Yana, whether they slammed into somebody's shoulder or a KK yesterday making a cut and her sneaker going like this. It's all on film. We have it right there. We look at it right away. And so, um, you know, when she said, oh, this, you know, okay, so let's take a look and see what it is. And um, it's not, it's not going to be like two days, but it's not going to be long. You know, at the final four and eight, the discussion started with you and Don. And a few others. Is this the year when the WNBA surpasses in prominence the college game the way the men's NBA has long surpassed the college game in prominence? And I wonder for you, having watched this year and as much as the WNBA grew and all that, whether you think that's now finally happened? Um, whether the WNBA has surpassed college? Is, is, maybe not has yet, but yeah. is. Will it? Is that what you're saying? The way. Is it on the way? Um, well, I would hope so. Uh, 